Hi, Greg Alderman, welcome to One Voice Board. This is volume two of Board Behavior Proverbs. Hopefully you've seen the first five. Let me pick it right, right up with number six. The board doesn't do the work that it has delegated or rework what others have done on behalf of the board. Think about that. The board doesn't do the work that it has delegated or rework what others have done on behalf of the board. One of my greatest pet peeves is several examples over the years of the board taking the work of a committee and then redoing all the discussion and all the work and all the arguments and all the different points of what the committee did the hard work for and essentially ask yourself the question, why did they even delegate it to the committee in the first place if they weren't gonna take the recommendations and the hard work of the committee uh, working on their behalf. The same thing with staff. When you ask staff to do work on your behalf, when you ask them to make a proposal, when you ask them to look hard at uh, the, the organizational goals and they do that work and then you redo all of the construction, all of the building up, all of the questions of, of constructing those goals, you're reworking what you've delegated. The board needs to stay focused. We cannot say this enough on goal development and looking upward and outward and not getting down into the weeds and focusing on the means and especially redoing work that it's delegated. Proverb number seven is very close to this as well. The board's job is to ensure that a proposal aligns with what it has said. The board's job is to ensure that a proposal aligns with what it has said. So a board makes policy. Policy is speaking with one voice. When a proposal comes back to it from either its committee or its staff, their, one of their primary checks on it is, is this proposal in line with what we have told our committee, what we have told our staff? In other words, does it fit how we've described as go the goal? Does it fit within the limitations? These are the questions we ask. We ask, does it, is it a reasonable interpretation of what the board has said? Here's principle number eight. The board needs its staff to succeed. The board must therefore be very clear what it wants and expects of its staff. For me, this first part of the proverb, and this is one I heard from somebody else, and I thought, yeah, of course. But then when you really think about it, uh, management boards, if you fall into that ditch of, of being in a management board and, and micromanaging your staff, there is an adversarial relationship that naturally follows from that. And the difficulty over time is that there's a gotcha mentality. In other words, we're trying to catch the staff not doing what they're supposed to be doing or not behaving the way we want them to behave. And so uh, there, that adversarial relationship leads to uh, not wanting the staff to succeed, but really hoping that they, they don't fail. And that's a different mentality. You see, if we want our staff to succeed, we're going to point them in the direction of the goals that we've given them, and then we're gonna resource them so that they can accomplish those goals. Proverb number nine, someone always must be accountable, otherwise no one is. Every time you make a goal, every time you establish something that you want your organization to achieve, whether you're the board speaking to the CEO or the, the lead pastor, or the lead pastor delegating to a staff person or a committee, there needs to be a connection with who's responsible for accomplishing the goal. Uh, in other words, like uh, it was always said from uh, Theodore Roosevelt, the buck stops with me. That's the mandate. Who does the buck stop with? Who is ultimately responsible and accountable for accomplishing what the board has said? If it's nobody's baby, then nobody's going to take care of it. That's another way to think about it. And that's a proverb that maybe some of you have heard as well. And then on that as well is you don't create what I call two-headed monsters. One person's accountable, not two people being accountable for the same thing. Then you create competition, difficulty, territory wars, all kinds of issues pop up from that. And here's the 10th proverb. We empower our committees and staff to work on our behalf. Now, I've been saying this, and, and this is just another proverb to look at it from a different way. We give away authority and responsibility. That's what empowerment is. And then we let them do the work. 
not reworking it, not taking it back, not looking over their shoulder, but empowering our people to act. The question always inevitably comes up, well, what do we do if they're not performing or, or doing what we want them to do? The question then is, is an appro appropriate accountability loop in place? And that's what we look for. Hey, if you're liking these proverbs, if they're helping jog your memory on uh, stuff that's good about board governance, or if you have more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at greg at onevoiceboard.org. We'll see you next time.